Welcome to the Real News Network, folks. This is Mark Steiner. Good to have you with us. Trump is traveling to West Virginia tonight, where he will announce sweeping changes in regulations for greenhouse gas emissions, gutting Obama's clean power plant plan. Now, let's hear what Barack Obama had to say when he announced his plan originally. They'll claim this plan is a war on coal to scare up votes, even as they ignore my plan to actually invest in revitalizing coal country and supporting health care and retirement for coal miners and their families and retraining those workers for better paying jobs and healthier jobs. Communities across America have been losing coal jobs for decades. I want to work with Congress to help them, not to use them as a political football. Partisan press releases aren't going to help those families. But this is one of those rare issues because of its magnitude, because of its scope, that if we don't get it right, we may not be able to reverse. And we may not be able to adapt sufficiently. There is such a thing as being too late when it comes to climate change. And you can tell that was early on by the state of President Obama's hair. <laughs> But now let's hear what Donald Trump said about this very same thing. Today, I'm taking bold action to follow through on that promise. My administration is putting an end to the war on coal. We're gonna have clean coal, really clean coal. So the clean coal that President uh, Trump talks about here, what will it do? It will allow states to create their own regulatory systems to make power and power plants more energy efficient, they say. The new Environmental Protection Agency regime's plan will reduce carbon dioxide emissions from power plants up to 1.5 percent by 2030. That's what the EPA announced. The Obama plan targeted reducing those levels by 32 percent in 2030. Yes, that much difference. And I use the word regime to characterize the Trump EPA administration. Why? Because paraphrasing another person's quote, he appointed the most aggressive, knowledgeable foxes to guard the hen house. Men like EPA acting administrator Andrew Wheeler, who was a lawyer and lobbyist for the Murray Energy Corporation. While the man who runs clean air for the EPA is William Wareham. He's a brilliant attorney who worked for the Koch brothers and coal and energy industries, who was hell bent on legally destroying clean air. And I use the word legally. So to help us understand all this and what it means and what lies ahead, we welcome Mustafa Santiago Ali, who was the chief environmental justice official for the EPA, but resigned after 24 years there in the face of Trump's dismantling of that agency. He is now senior vice president of climate, environmental justice, and community revitalization for the Hip Hop Caucus. And Mustafa Ali, great to see you again, and welcome to the Real News Network. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. So when I said earlier that this is uh, putting some really ferocious foxes to guard the hen house of our environmental future, I don't think I was overplaying the statement. What do you think? No, I think you were spot on. You know, it's unfortunate that we have individuals who know better but refuse to do better. You know, these folks know that over 200,000 people die prematurely from air pollution every year in our country. So any actions that weaken that put more people's lives at risk. We also know that 27 million people have asthma in our country, 7 million kids, and we know disproportionately it is African-American and Latino children who continue to be the ones who are going to the emergency rooms and who are losing their lives. So with this new dirty energy plan that they're trying to move forward on, they're actually doing a huge disservice to our country uh, and putting people uh, in harm's way. So I, a couple of things I really want to explore here. The first is, is something you may be very aware of since you were at the EPA for all that time. And that's the question of, of what was in the Obama plan. What is it about the regulations mm -hmm. that allows people who now run the EPA, who have wanted to dismantle these things for years and have lobbied and worked and been paid millions of dollars to do just that, now they're running the EPA, but what, what is it about the way things are regulated that allows them to do this within the regulations, within the law itself? What's happening here? Well, I want to make sure that folks understand that this is a proposed rule. 
Um, so it still has to go through uh, a process. And of course, um, there probably will be legal challenges. Uh, if you remember the Clean Power Plan, uh, right at the end of the last administration, there went to the uh, Supreme Court and there was a stay there. Um, so that slowed that process down, if you will. Um, and that gave this window of opportunity when the new administration came in to be able to uh, dismantle it, uh, to put a new plan in place. Now, I, I want to give people some hope also. Please do. Because, you know, I mean, man, I mean, you know, I can sit here and go to this and watch this and go, but I don't want to be Mr. Gloom and Doom. So please give us something good. What is it? <laughs> well, that, 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 that. So let, let me break it down for folks in a couple of different ways. Sure. One, the Clean Power Plan is built on the law and strong science. So that means that uh, for those who are trying to dismantle it, they would have to be able to prove that the elements that are identified inside um, do not meet the letter of the law or that the science is incorrect. Now, this is one of the reasons that you find that this administration has been trying to uh, sort of roll back or weaken science at the agency so that they can manipulate policy. And if they can manipulate policy, then they can choose winners and losers. They love to use that term um, and prop up industries that have been failing uh, for a number of decades now. So folks should understand that as these legal challenges go forward, um, that you know the previous work and a huge amount of work went into the clean power plan, into the refinery rule, the methane rule, all these different things, the clean car, all these things that you now hear in the press, um, there is a lot of strong science that's behind them. And they're also built upon the law. So these individuals who have been moving forward in this administration trying to dismantle and deconstruct these things are running into the challenges that exist when you don't have uh, strong science, when you don't have a strong legal uh, footing to stand on. And we'll see how it plays out in the courts. But you now have people like William Wareham and the others who are in charge of what's going on. I mean, they've made a career. Of, well, it's just example. When... The people they lobbied for, that Andrew Wheeler lobbied for, uh, in the in the Energy Corporation, when they, they they when when Trump won, they actually mapped out a plan of what to do with the EPA, mapped out a plan about leaving the Paris Climate Talks, mapped out a plan for ending restrictions on power plants. That's exactly what's being implemented. So what the leaders of that industry wanted to have happen are happening at this moment. They are. But they also know that this is a long fight. This is a, a battle that's, you know, moving forward. And, and you know, one of the one of the things that's coming out of this also is that people are beginning to pay much more attention uh, to the environmental impacts that are happening in their lives, uh, in their communities across the country, and also all of these, you know, severe sort of weather events that continue to happen that are linked to climate change. So it's bringing greater attention, which will place more pressure on these individuals. We also have a vote that's coming up here in November. Um, and I never tell folks who to vote for, but I do say you should vote for someone who cares about your communities, who cares about uh, the lives of your children and what's happening. So with all that being said, we have sort of this intersection uh, of actions and activities that are all coming uh, to the forefront here uh, over the next few months. And that's why it's so important for folks to get engaged, uh, for them to become educated, um, and for them to actually get, you know, uh, involved in the process, if you will, both on the state level and the federal level. But I think what you're saying is important on a number of levels here, Mustafa. I'm, on the one, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the, the, the Harriet Tubman philosophy of how you approach these things, uh, which is you got to keep on going, keep going, keep going, don't stop. Um, and I think that, that that, so sometimes we can get into, oh, the woe is me, we've lost. Mm. Um, that they've taken over everything. But I think this is, so it's, in, it's interesting because they, 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 they do want to turn the Trump administration, turn all these regulations around. Uh, the question is, how do you turn that around? Well, I want to ask that in two ways. I'm going I'm to raise a clip here. This is the clip of a gentleman who we first met when he took on Hillary Clinton in West Virginia. He's a coal miner. He supports and maybe works for Donald Trump as well. Uh, he's always kind of trotted out by Fox News as he was today um, to, to, uh, to, to 
give his very reasoned attack about why this is a good thing. So let's listen to this for a moment and watch this, and then I want to come back and ask you a question about it. For, for President Trump to, whatever he is going to do that's going to help our industry, you know, it's just, it's great for us to be able to say we have someone who, who cares about the people in this state and cares about the people in our industry uh, that he's got our back. And, and so if people wonder why we uh, supported him the way that we do or why we do support him the way we do, this is just one of the reasons why. So, Mustafa, you grew up in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And you have grew up with a lot of men and women, friends of yours, who feel the way this gentleman feels. He, he may be a shill in some ways for Trump, but he also represents an opinion that's fairly deep, especially people who are really worried about their livelihood and how they're going to survive. So I'm curious, as, as somebody who is innately an organizer, as somebody who goes around the country talking about these things, has been working around environmental justice and with communities still, I mean, so, so how, what, it, what is it that turns this around? What is it turns out around communities that are fearful of losing everything they have because their industry will be cl closed down, they'll lose their $30 an hour jobs. What's the strategy? What are the thoughts? What do you say? Well, you know, one, I always honor the hard work. You know, I've had members in my family for generations who came out of the coal mines, um, who have come out of steel, a number of different industries. So I always honor that hard work, um, you know, and, and the culture that existed there. But I also talk to folks and, you know, there's such a disservice that goes on in Appalachia about preparing folks uh, for today and tomorrow, uh, moving folks to a just transition, creating these new economic opportunities that give people choices. Uh, in many instances, folks are locked in because there are no other economic choices that they see. And that's because the powers that be put it in place uh, that way. So we know that we could be uh, making sure there's advanced manufacturing opportunities in West Virginia. There are incredible folks there who work well both with their hands and their minds, but they won't allow these new opportunities to move into the space. We could do it around wind. If folks understood how many different components go into a wind turbine, um, and how many jobs could be created in that space, both in the creation and then in the maintenance also, um, it would be, you know, a windfall, no pun intended, for West Virginia. It's amazing when you drive back home to West Virginia, and just as you get to the Maryland and West Virginia line, you look along the ridge line there in Garrett County, and there are these huge um, windmills that exist all along uh, the mountaintops. Um, and that could be in West Virginia if it wasn't for those individuals who continue to stop uh, those types of industries from coming in uh, and creating these new economic opportunities. The same thing could happen in solar and a number of other renewable energy spaces um, if they were only to open up the future uh, to West Virginia, to Kentucky, to Ohio, uh, to uh, Western uh, Pennsylvania as well. So. You know, that is one of the things that we have to be focused on, honoring what happened in the past and, and never degrading that, but also helping folks to be focused on these opportunities that are going to happen in the future. And, you know, the real disservice is that there are other states who will take advantage of this opportunity. And Appalachia will continue uh, to be, you know, um, lower on the economic realm, which then ties into public health, which ties into the opioid uh, issues that are going on. When I go back home and I have conversations with folks who, you know, unfortunately have, have fallen into the trap around opioids, in many instances, it's because a lack of hope. It's, a, it's because a lack of set of opportunities that exist. Um, and when folks go and make these statements and they stop these types of new opportunities from moving into the state, they're really doing a disservice on so many different levels, along, of course, with the public health impacts that folks in West Virginia are dealing with, but all across the country. Um, and now we found out recently that 4 million uh, less people have access to health care than they did uh, under the previous administration. So these are compounding effects uh, that folks are doing when they're putting these types of processes in place and they know better. Um, so that's why I often say, you know, my grandmother used to say that when you know better, do better. Um, <laughs> and these folks just for whatever reason, um, refuse to do that. Um, and it's unfortunate that the people who need their help the most, who need to have people who are forward thinking and who are creating new opportunities, 
um, are not the ones who are leading uh, in the state house there uh, or unfortunately on the federal level. Well, I think one of the important things you're telling us all here and talking to us about here is the fact that, that we, while we may not be able to stop Trump and the people around him from putting people in the EPA to run it who want to destroy and dismantle EPA and care nothing about the environment or people's health, that, that it's not over. That the hope is that, that and this is in the struggle and that it, we must continue to push and not allow this to stop us from saying this does not have to be our future. Oh, no, we most definitely have power. We have power unless we give it away. And that's from Appalachia to the Rust Belt to the Gulf Coast uh, to the breadbasket. We have power. We can make the change. We should be asking our elected officials, any policy that you are moving forward on, is this going to help to improve my life? Is this going to improve my health or is it going to place it in greater jeopardy? I speak all across the country, probably engaging with about 10,000 folks every month. I ask that one question every place I've been, from Maine to Appalachia uh, to Oklahoma, all the way over to California, and I ask the question, based upon what you have seen from this administration, is anyone in the room's health in a better position? I've never had one hand go up, and that is very telling about the actions that this administration is moving forward on when no one can point to one action that is making them healthier. Mustafa Ali, I want to thank you so much for taking your time today. It's been great to have you on the air with us here. Good to see you again. Thank you. It's always an honor to be with you. Keep it going. Our guest is Mustafa Santiago Ali from the Hip Hop Caucus. And I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News Network. Thank you for joining us. We'll be talking together soon. Take care.